Hey guys, it's T from Driftwood Gaming, and I'm here with another RPG Maker MZ The Basics tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to import custom sprite sheets and custom battler sheets into our game. So let's just get started. The first thing that we're going to do is take a look at some of the common mistakes and pitfalls that happen when people attempt to do this. I've put together a few files, and we're going to go ahead and use them and take a look at what happens when we don't quite do things right. So I want to put a gate on this wall. Oh no! I can't pick the gate! This box is too tiny! It's just not gonna... Uh, okay, we'll go with that. And let's see, maybe we have another gate file that'll work better. This one looks good. I want just one more gate on this wall. Okay, this one looks good too. Let's do this one. I'm also going to add a couple doors. All right, and then I changed the images around for the actors as well. So after we see what all this looks like, we'll look at the files and get to see why it's appearing the way it is and how to do it right. Let's check it out. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. This is awesome. Look at my guy down here. That's great. Beautiful. Okay, so you'll notice that we weren't able to pick the entire image for the first gate. The second gate looks good. The third gate seems to be just floating on the wall. That's kind of weird. The first door looks good, but the second door is also floating on the wall. Let's see what we did wrong. Not to mention this guy back here. He's just... He's just special. Alright, let's see what we did wrong. We're gonna go into the game files and take a look at how these have been arranged. This is the way a gate file should be named, and you'll see that it has an exclamation mark, a dollar sign, and the name of the file. Also, important to note, it's a PNG. If you try to use a JPEG as an image, it simply won't show up in the game engine. It'll be like you never put it in the file in the first place. You definitely need to use PNGs if you'd like them to show up in the engine. So this is a good gate file. Let's take a look at our other ones. You'll notice this gate file doesn't have an exclamation mark in front of it, and that was the gate that looked like it was kind of floating on the wall. The reason we put an exclamation mark in front of some file names is to prevent the sprite from being shifted 6 pixels upwards. Also, it prevents it from being affected by bush transparency. Finally, we have this gate file, and it has no preface on it whatsoever. This is the one where we could only pick a little tiny square out. Is the dollar sign tells the system that this is a single sprite sheet. Without the dollar sign, it's going to look for a full sprite sheet. So our selection box got a lot smaller because the system thought that there should be a lot more gates on this sheet. Let's talk about single and full sprite sheets for a minute. This is a representation of a full sprite sheet, and this is a representation of a single sprite sheet. You'll notice that a full sprite sheet has 12 sections along the top and 8 sections going along the side. If you have a full sprite sheet, you should use file name and then make sure it's a PNG. If it's an inanimate object, you can also add an exclamation mark. For a single sprite sheet, you'll notice that it has three sections across the top and four along the side. In this case, you must use a dollar sign in order for the system to know that the sprite sheet only holds one character. That way your selection box will be the right size. Again, make sure that it's a PNG. For either one, if it's an inanimate object, make sure to add the dollar sign. So the thing about these sprite sheets is, they don't have to be exactly 48 by 48. The default is 48 by 48, and the size of a default sprite sheet is 576 pixels by 384 pixels. 
The size for a default single sprite sheet is 144 pixels by 192 pixels. However, if you would like to increase the size of any of these sprite sheets that you would use, either for characters, for doors, for lamps, whatever it is that you want to use in your game, you can make them any size you want. In order to do that, determine the size that you need to fit your character in one single section and then make sure all these sections are the same size. Each square or section of the sprite sheet has to be the same size. So you can make it very big or you can make it very small. Just make sure each sprite section is the same size. The same goes for a single sheet. A simple example of this would be if I want my sprites to be 100 pixels wide, I would make my sprite sheet 300 pixels wide. If I wanted my sprites to be 100 by 100, my sprite sheet would be 300 by 400. You take the size of each sprite section and multiply it by the number of sprites that are on the sheet in each direction. Let's take a look at the character sprite sheets that I did wrong. Here's the actor where you can only see a corner of her head, and that is because I didn't specify that this is a single sprite sheet. So again, the system is looking for a full sprite sheet and gives me a very small selection box. This is how it looks if it's done correctly. And then finally, the character that we had following our party around that was all kinds of messed up, it was because there's this transparent section that's on the outside and underneath our sprite section. So what this did was it gave this sprite section about this much room, it gave this sprite section about this much room, but this final sprite gets this much room. They're definitely not even, so it won't work unless each sprite section is the same size. Let's move on. Now we're gonna talk about how to bring custom battlers into your game. This is an example of how the system reads your battlers. The idea is very much the same as the sprite sheets. You can make any one of these sections, or your sprites, any size that you want, but each one has to be the same size. So if I change this from 64 by 64 to, say, 80 by 80, every single one of these has to be 80 by 80, or it won't work correctly. There are nine sprites across the top, and six sprites along the side. Now the way the system reads this is each one of these is an animation that it'll play with three frames. And those animations are based on the skills or the state that your player is in during battle. For instance, the idle animation will play while your character is just standing there in between rounds if it's not waiting to cast something or damaged or one of the other states that's on the sheet. Ready physical will happen when your character's ready to take their turn. They've already gotten their command and they're ready to take their turn. Ready magical is the same thing, but instead of for a physical attack, the magical is where they're ready to do something magical on their turn. And then you have guard. Damage. Now this plays when your character actually takes damage. This plays when an enemy misses your character. Stabbing is an attack animation, as well as swinging, shooting, using physical skill, using magical skill, and then there's also use item. Then there's escape. This will play if your party escapes the battle, and then the victory animation will play if you win. Crisis danger will happen when your hit points are under a certain threshold. Abnormal state will happen when your character is under a state, such as poison or confusion. And then if your character is under the sleep state, this will play. And of course, if you die, this is your animation. It's not very lively. So let's take a look at a battler sheet and we can see what all those look like. Okay, we can see Reed here doing his poses and you can kind of visualize what he'll do during the battle and how each one of these three Sprite sets will play the animation throughout your battle. Another thing to note is that the default battler sprite sheet is 567 pixels by 384 pixels. 
Okay, awesome. Now we know how to avoid making mistakes like this in our game, and if we do, we'll know why. We'll be able to go back and fix it. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something new, and you can take that knowledge to bring all kinds of awesome custom art into your games, or, you know, just know it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below or join our Discord. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.